Today on Real Life, fighting for religious liberties. Jeremy Samick of the Independence Law Center talks about issues affecting you. Chicken, cheese, and peppers. Katie Farrell cooks up stuffed peppers in the Real Life Kitchen. And on Real Life Coaching, becoming God's standard setters. Danette Crawford begins her series on how to be a person of influence. That's today on Real Life. Welcome. This is Real Life. God loves you. Jesus died for you. The Holy Spirit, He empowers you. And the Bible is your and my guide to abundant life. I'm your host, Don Blackwood, my beautiful co-host and bride, Terry, and our handsome... <laughs> What's it going? It goes like this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pastor J. Anthony That's Gilbert. Got to keep them eyebrows flat. Keep... Oh, I need eyebrows. <laughs> Got to keep those eyebrows flat. Welcome to the new year. Yes. Here we are back with you on Real Life on, on the very first of the, of the year. It's not the first, it's what, the second of the year. But we're so, we, we pray that your New Year celebration was great. I hope that you got to watch some of the uh, Real Life uh, uh, concert, the New Year's concert. Oh, yes. We did. I enjoyed that. Oh, well, we were there. Well, we were there and watched it because <laughs> we weren't there New Year's night. It was taped. Obviously, it was taped. Mm -hmm. You know, what I, what I liked was uh, we compared it. And see, like, I was comparing it, flipping back and forth between uh, Ryan Seacrest and us. Okay. Ryan Seacrest out there in a one-degree weather in New York yeah. and us in the studio. And I was, you know, that, and I have nothing against Ryan, Ryan and what they do in New York. That was all good, except... When you flipped across, you got some kind of. Th there was a different spirit, Pastor. Let me just say sure. this: there was a different spirit in, in in the real in the real life Quarterstone New Year's. There was a spirit of mm -hmm. worship, mm -hmm. and adoration, and praise to God, and shouting in the New Year. And then they were shouting in the New Year in New York too, but with a whole different motivation. Yeah. Well, we were all warm. That's right. For one, yeah. and they were cold. But you know, one of the good things, and one of the songs I believe that Seth and Nerva. Uh, sang was about how we don't have to worry about what's going to happen this year because God's already been where we're going. That's That's right. Right. You know, he's That's got everything right. taken care of. Amen. And so you don't have to fear 2018. Sometimes we wake up, you know, in the new year, wonder what's going to happen, what's going to take place. God's got it all under control. Amen. He sure does. I, we hope that you all had a, a nice holiday. Uh, most, most of all, just celebrating God's love for you. You know, that that's really what it's all about is reminding that Jesus really loves us. Amen. Mm -hmm. We're glad you tuned in to be part of the, the family. we are uh, got an exciting program with you today. We're going to talk about uh, freedom, liberty. We're, mm -hmm. we're going to talk about how we can become and be that person that God has called us to be and how we can stand in, a, in unity to bring that light to the culture that we live in, too. So that's what we're going to talk about. And our coaching is coming up. Don't want to miss the coaching get deeper into the truth. Uh, what, just on a personal side, we went as a family, we have this tradition. We do. Terry, tell, tell, the, tell the folks at home what our tradition oh, is. Oh, okay. Well, our tradition. <laughs> you look scared. <laughs> like I scared you. No, no. I mean, we have different traditions, but without fail, we always have a tradition. New Year's Day, we go to the movie. And it's not just any movie. It has to be a movie that we all have voted on. Get that. And majority oh, rules. Yeah. And there's certain percentages that I don't know. I don't really understand. Our son that is studying finance, he's the one, or not finance, business analytics. He comes up with a formula, that determines the movie, and we saw the darkest hour. The darkest hour mm -hmm. by Winston Churchill. It's it was good. A, oh, I thought yeah, it was I loved a very it. good movie. I loved it. If you like history, if you like if you if you like history, it's a, a movie that takes you back into mm -hmm. not too long ago, right right as World War II was beginning for England. Just a very powerful film telling that story of, that, of the time when England was very close to being er eradicated. Could have been eradicated without intervention. So uh, it's, it's a story of courage. So as, as, as Winston Churchill, you may not like him, you may love him, but he was a man of courage and a man who stood up and, and, and said what he thought. Wouldn't it be better, Pastor Jay, if we Christians stood up and said what we thought? Without a doubt, I think this is the time that we need to stand up and let our voice be heard in this yeah. season. Because if we, tell, if we don't tell the truth, what, 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 what's going to happen? The lie is going to prevail. And if the People lie walk in darkness. 
And, and, and people walk in darkness. And that's what real life is dedicated to. Real life is dedicated to providing real answers, truthful answers for real life's questions. Because there are questions in this world, brother and sister, they have to have answers. Yes. And all those answers are found in the Bible. Everything we need to know about how to live a godly life is provided in the Word of God and powered by the Holy Spirit. Yes. So there we are. Welcome to the program. Turn, put on your listening ears so you could hear the Holy Spirit's voice because He's going to speak today. Will you be the one who listens? Will you be that one who listens? I pray yes. I pray the answer to that is yes. Jay, what's up next? Well, if you're wondering what to have for your next meal, we have an answer for that as well. We're headed over to the kitchen for another edition of Dashing Dish. Katie Farrell is making, check this out, a three cheese chicken stuffed pepper. Ooh. Let's take a look. Hi, I'm Katie Farrell with Dashing Dish. And at Dashing Dish, I'm all about teaching you how to create healthy alternatives to the food you crave. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make a really quick and healthy 30-minute uh, meal. It's called Three Cheese Stuffed Chicken Peppers. And this is kind of a spin on maybe like a shell uh, recipe where you use shells and you stuff them. And I think we all can remember that from childhood. My mom always made stuffed shells. So really stuffed shells are not horrible for you, but I'm gonna show you a healthier way to make them today. And really the key component here to make them a little bit healthier is using red peppers instead of the pasta shells. So um, there's a lot of great options for healthier pasta these days, but one of my favorite things to do is just take out the pasta altogether and replace it with a vegetable. So here we have red bell peppers, and I just took three of them and cut them straight in half lengthwise and then removed the stem and the seed. Um, so you just cut them in half and then take all the seeds out and discard those. Then I have a cup of chicken here, and you can use rotisserie chicken. You can um, throw some chicken breasts in the crock pot with a little bit of um, chicken broth and just shred up the chicken and then add it to your recipe. That's a quick way to get some shredded chicken. So I have one cup of shredded chicken that I'm gonna add to the bowl here. And you could do this with lean ground beef or ground turkey, but I like using um, shredded chicken just because it puts a different spin on this recipe. Instead of the ricotta cheese, which is high in fat and calories, I'm going to use cottage cheese. And if you don't like cottage cheese, don't let that turn you off. You won't even know what's in there. In fact, it tastes so similar to ricotta cheese in the recipe that you would never know. And oftentimes, I just don't tell my family. I don't tell my husband who eats like a picky two-year-old, hey, that's cottage cheese in the recipe. I just, you know, serve it to him and say, what do you think? And oftentimes, he loves it. So then I'm going to put some Parmesan cheese. This is a fourth cup going in. And Parmesan cheese is a great cheese to use because it adds a lot of flavor. It packs a lot of flavor with not as many calories. So fourth cup of Parmesan cheese. And then I'm going to do a little bit of Greek yogurt. And this just helps add a little bit of creaminess. But you could also just do a little bit more cottage cheese. Um, I'm going to do three tablespoons. So almost a fourth cup. And then for my seasonings, I like to add a lot of seasoning to food because it adds flavor without adding calories or fat or anything else. Um, so I'm gonna do some garlic powder and that's a half teaspoon of garlic powder. And then I'm gonna do one teaspoon of Italian seasoning. And that's really just a blend of oregano and basil. So Italian seasoning is a great one to have on hand because it kind of combines a few different uh, seasonings in one. And then just a pinch of salt and pepper. And then I'm going to do I have a three-fourths cup of mozzarella cheese here, and I'm gonna do almost all of it, well, I'll say about a half, into the filling, and then the rest will sprinkle on top. I'm gonna give this a quick stir, and it'll form kind of a nice creamy filling for these bell peppers. And what we're gonna do next is kind of something that's a little more traditional for a stuffed shell recipe, which is we take a baking dish and you can see here I have it lined with foil. That's just for easy cleanup, but you could just spray a you know, nine by 13 baking dish. You don't have to add the foil. Um, and then I'm gonna take a cup of sauce and you can use your favorite spaghetti sauce. You can use a um, pizza sauce. You can use any kind of tomato sauce. And I just 
put that down in the bottom of the pan. And I'm gonna kind of spread it out here with a spoon. And that kind of gives it the, the feel of stuffed shells when we put our peppers down in there. So I'm gonna take a pepper and I'm going to fill it with this filling. Now, if you wanted it to just be a quick and easy way to sort of measure out the filling and make sure you're evenly dividing it among the peppers, you can always use a measuring cup to fill it as well. So I just put the peppers down in there and continue on um, until they're completely filled. I'll do a few more here, just to kind of show you. And this filling is absolutely delicious. It ends up tasting really creamy, cheesy. It's a great way to have dinner on the table in less than 30 minutes, because you saw how easy that was, especially when you start with pre-cooked and shredded chicken. That cuts really your recipe time in half. So I always like to have a rotisserie chicken in the fridge just to throw into a recipe real quick. So here we have a few more. And then I would just finish up with the last two. Now, just to show you um, how to finish these off, I'm going to add one more cup of, again, your favorite spaghetti sauce, tomato sauce, pizza sauce, whatever you have on hand, and just kind of pour it evenly over the tops. And again, that makes it more like a stuffed shell. And then we're gonna take the rest of the cheese here and top it off. And these are so delicious. They're only 150 calories per pepper. So, and they pack a lot of protein. Um, if you have a gluten intolerance, wheat intolerance, you know, you don't even have to worry about it because there's no pasta in these. And then you bake these 375 for about 30 to 35 minutes and dinner is on the table. And you can see here's the finished product and they turn out absolutely wonderful, delicious, cheesy Italian goodness there. You can even top it with a little bit more uh, sauce if you'd like and serve it like that. If you like this recipe or more just like it, you can head over to ctvn.org. I don't know, guys, what do you think? I think it's a good dish to try. It's um, a dashing dish. It's a dash. Well, dash. My wife is watching, baby. Let's get that in the oven soon. Get, uh, <laughs> put yeah. the heat on. I like the red pepper because it's a little bit sweeter yeah. than a green pepper, so I like that kind of, uh, I like her twist, but best of all, easy cleanup. That is the That's best beautiful. thing that she provides are these cl easy cleanup tips. I well, love we're gonna, that. We're gonna come back, we're gonna talk about some resolutions and resolutions for the new year. Do you have, have you set any resolutions? I know what you say, they're always the ones that we mess up and we stop, but there are some resolutions we can, we can set that we can keep. We can talk about what those resolutions may look like. If you don't, if you're new to us, you don't get a newsletter, here's how you can get it. I was diagnosed with boring mail. I just hated getting my mail because all I got were bills. I felt so bored and disconnected. One day, I called for the Cornerstone Real Life Newsletter. Now, I can't wait to go to my mailbox. Side effects of the Real Life Newsletter may include a closer walk with God, daily encouragement, information about Cornerstone Network special guests, and more. Call today for the Real Life Newsletter. It'll change your life. The Lord has been moving in my spirit as we're preparing for this new year. The cornerstone needs to kind of sharpen ourselves in some specific areas. Mm -hmm. What's important to God needs to be important to us. Mm -hmm. Not that it hasn't always been important to us, but we need to put it to the front of the, to the stove, as, as the old proverb says. And that, that, one of those topics is life and the sanctity of life. Right. And how important it is for we Christians 
to put our arms together and, and stand for life. Mm -hmm. You're going to hear us talk about life a lot. And I'm so glad that Jeremy Samick is the senior counsel at the Independent Law Center. He specializes in protecting Christian liberties. Mm -hmm. Jeremy, welcome back. Thank I'm glad you. you're here. Yes, great. I'm so glad you're here. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. Happy New yeah. Year to you. Uh, remind us of your family. I know you have a, a family and you're from this area. Sure, we have five children. Um, now we have four boys and a, and a little girl, so spanning between 12 and 2. Wow. So we're pretty busy. Yeah. Pretty Christmas busy. was big at your house. Christmas was big. We, yeah. had a, we had a fun time. Lots yeah. of family. Now, did you get into bed early on New Year's? Uh, no. New Year's? No, no, oh, no. Okay. The two-year-old did, but everyone else stayed up pretty late. <laughs> Stay up and watch. That's right. Life's important to you, too, isn't it? It's absolutely important to me. And the, at the Pennsylvania Family Institute and Independence Law Center, um, we're the largest group in Pennsylvania that's dedicated to preserving religious liberty, uh, protecting life at all stages, and promoting marriage in the family. And we do that in the Capitol in Harrisburg, we do that at town councils, at school boards, and we do it in the courts of law. And one of the issues uh, this past year that we've been fighting for, it was called Senate Bill 3, which was a bill that would re reduce the legal uh, age for abortion from 24 weeks to 20 weeks. Mm -hmm. Now, Pennsylvania and the United States in general has the dubious distinction of being one of the seven nations in the world that permits abortions that late. Really? North Korea, China are two human rights abusers that are on that list. It's not a good list to be on. Right. Pennsylvania is on that list. So this year in the state house and the Senate, we were able to get this, this passed, this ban on dismemberment abortions yep. and moving it down to 20 weeks for the first time in 28 years in Pennsylvania. Wow. Mm -hmm. Uh, to have this, that both, both branches um, pass this. Unfortunately, our governor, Governor Wolf, vetoed this important legislation. He was a Planned Parenthood escort himself. Right. Um, he's a, a huge advocate of abortion, so it's unfortunate, um, but it's very encouraging to see that our elected leaders in the Absolutely. legislative branch pass this bill. And isn't it good to note that this year, 2018, is a year of some upcoming elections in Pennsylvania. Absolutely. And the governor Absolutely. is one of the upcoming elections, correct? The governor correct? is one of the upcoming elections. And, okay. and, and one really good thing is we see the candidates on the other side, Paul Mango, uh, uh, Representative Terzai, they've both come out and said that they would have passed this law if they were in office. What would be his, what, did he have a logical reason for veto or was it just a, uh, an emotional veto? No, it's somebody who's, who's for abortion and no limits whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And so that we, we've, we've seen this time and time again with this administration that they've tried to remove and they, they won't even uh, investigate when there's violations at Planned Parenthoods um, because of the people who are in power right now. And in fact, we, we passed some, uh, a bill a few years ago after the Kermit Gosnell incidents that put the same requirements on abortion clinics that are on other medical facilities for protection of their patients, safety, right. cleanliness, mm -hmm. uh -huh. to, to make them meet that same standard. And they fought against that, but we were ultimately victorious and were able to get that passed into That's law. Good. Since that time, six Planned Parenthoods have closed, mm -hmm. including one just in Harrisburg this past year. Instead of adhering to medical standards, right. they've they decided to close them. those facilities. So we know what's really important to them. It's right. not the patient, it's not certainly not the baby, but it's not the woman. That's it's right. the bottom line, it's the, the uh, money. That's what I was going to yeah. ask you for, yeah. Jeremy. What is the bottom line for Planned, Planned, Parent, Planned Parenthood? What drives them? It's certainly the amount of abortions that they, that they undertake. Right. The amount, we've done research, and, and, and over the past couple of years, the amount of other services that they offer have been steadily, steadily decreasing at a sharp rate, but the number of abortions that they've been doing increased, even though the, the amount of facilities have been decreasing Can as well. Can you answer this for us? Because some people will say to me, well, Planned Parenthood does not receive any tax dollars for abortions, mm -hmm. but I have read contrary to that. How would you, how, what's a good answer for that? Well, whenever an organization receives a dollar, they can use that dollar for whatever they want to use it for. Now, whether, when they receive a dollar from the government, that frees up the other dollars they receive from donors to be able to use for whatever they want. So every dollar that they receive gives them the freedom to provide more towards their abortion mm -hmm. services. Mm -hmm. What's well, an abortion? Isn't that a charge? Is there not, they're not a charge for an abortion when you go in as a client? Do yeah, they? Yeah, absolutely. There's, there's a charge. That's how they make all, most of their money. I most thought it was also through Medicaid because Medicaid su subsidizes abortions and so 
um, Planned Parenthood receives Medicaid and that's where the money comes from. Yeah, I think in, th in those situations they're usually receiving it for whatever other uh, mm -hmm. services that they may offer, which are very small. And, and in fact, one of the things that we discovered this year, on every Planned Parenthood website in Pennsylvania, they offered prenatal care, that they provided prenatal care. Right. Pennsylvania Family Institute did research. We called every single one of them. We looked at all of their websites. They said they did prenatal care. Every one of them, when we called them, when we asked, hey, do you do prenatal care? We have somebody, no, we don't provide that. No, we don't provide that. So we actually had uh, Representative Keith Rothfuss yes. in Washington, D.C. got up onto the floor and, he, and he, he explained that to people and he said they're misrepresenting what they do, they're lying about what they do, they're right. saying they do prenatal services, they go up on TV shows and they have their talking points that they do these things and they right. do not. Well, the, for me, the bigger picture is you know, we have all our elected officials saying, hey, abortion, we need to cut back to 20 weeks. But our governor, who is our leader, is totally doing the polar opposite of what us, uh, we as people are saying, you know. So he's not really listening to, to us. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. No, that's, that's a good mm -hmm. way to say it, Terry. He's, his ear isn't to the people. No, it's his not. His ear is to no. someplace else. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's personal. Maybe it's his personal convictions or whatever other reason he's not listening to why what, what, what the, le the elective representatives said, at least. Yeah. And that's, a, that's both, both sides of the, of the hall, of that's the right. aisle. That's right. right. And well, that's what, why it's so important to pay attention to the elections. Elections have consequences, and Absolutely. so we need to make sure that we know where people stand and, and what they're going to stand for whenever they come into office. Right. And we have to remind our, our, our family when they go out to vote where these men and women stand on the issues that are important to us. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's as, right. Christ as Christians. Yeah. What, what is important to us? And that's what I mentioned in the beginning of the program. What are the important questions that are cultural that we should be salt in and light to? What are those? And I think life, protection of life. Many, many times we talk about abortion, and I, don't, I know this isn't where your specialties are, but we talk about it from the, from the baby's perspective, which is a right and just thing to do. Life should be protected. But you, the other side of the coin is the mother. The mother who chose to give that baby up, what happens to her? Right. You know, how is she sold a bill of goods by Planned Parenthood or whoever else it, uh, that this isn't really a baby, it's just a piece of tissue, and that uh, you're not really ending a life, you're preserving your life, you're protecting your freedoms, which is a reverse of the truth. I'm so thankful for you and for your organization that are out on the, on the edge fighting this. What motivates you to do that? Well, I mean, protect, I think protecting the innocent. We're, we're charged in the Bible that we're to, to take care of the orphans, we're to take care of the widows. We're fulfilling our biblical responsibility. But one other thing I want to point out is it's not just the governor, it's not just the, the mm -hmm. state elected leaders, it's also the school board members. It's also our council members. And, right. and a lot of times we think this is something that the Supreme Court has got their hands into. What could a school board member do that affects this? Well, just this year, we were able to stop another school district who was going to have Planned Parenthood officials have an office within their school building and an, a, a Planned Parenthood employee who would provide their sex education and their contraceptives wow. and things oh, like boy. that. And we were able to defeat that. We were able to inform the people uh, that follow us on Facebook at Pennsylvania Family Institute and Council um, and on our website, pafamily.org. And they were able to get out to the school board meeting. We were able to help them uh, with what they need to say. And they ended up winning in a five to four vote to prevent Planned Parenthood from getting into that school. That's good. On the flip side, so we've been able to stop things. We've also been able to have positive policies passed at school boards that help. And for instance, we're talking about the women who are, who are, are with an unplanned pregnancy and they're not sure what to do. We had a little girl who was 14 years old. She was pregnant. Uh, she wanted to keep the baby. Her mom, instead of taking her to school, took her to an abortion clinic. Fortunately, we have a waiting period in Pennsylvania. So her, her boyfriend, and her boyfriend's mom were able to call us. We were able to go in and get an injunction to stop the mother from bringing her back to an abortion clinic and having it done. We sent that order to all of the abortion clinics in Philadelphia. When, they, when the mother brought that daughter back, the abortion clinic had to turn her away wow. because they had a court order in their hands preventing them from doing that. Now, we've been able to get policies passed in school districts where now they will provide information to the students who become pregnant of places that are going to help them with free child care, yeah. churches who will come in and say, we'll take care of child care for you so that you can continue your education. So we're removing one of the, the burdens, one of those scary things for Absolutely. those mothers. So awesome. what, what does, what does a, a regular person, you know, we love Jesus, we, we uh, hate abortion, what do we do? What's our, what's our first step this year, 2018, 
to make a difference in that? Well, I think the first is, is always prayer. I think mm -hmm. prayer is the most important. But the second thing is we don't, if we don't know what's happening, our people perish for lack of knowledge. We're not going to be able to take the steps necessary to protect life. So you can follow organizations like ours, and there's many others, but pafamily.org. On the website, you can sign up and get emails so that whenever there's legislation being, being debated, that you can contact your state representatives, contact your state senators, contact your school board members. So knowledge is the most important thing. The, the next step is Let's action. Right. Let's stay connected as we go into this year and, yes. see, and see changes mm -hmm. happen. Absolutely. You know, it's one thing to talk about change. It's another thing to see change happen. And I, I believe God's a God of change, Terry. He is. And there's so many things that we need. We didn't even touch on that they're involved with that we need to get involved in and uh, get more knowledge. Well, let's, right? you know, as, as the Lord says, while it's still daylight, so we're, we're going to work while it's still daylight. Thank God for men and women who stand for the truth. We look to the headlines. We see God in the headlines. Let's see what Sydney's found. When it comes to the new year, many people are looking for ways to change. I know I do, and that may be true for you too. And for one ministry based here in Pittsburgh, they're uplifting women by pampering them with a purpose. This is not social justice. This is not about slapping makeup on somebody or, you know, doing a manicure, pedicure. This is about the Christ in you and the power of your story healing someone else. And the beauty of God, when you pour out of that, you heal somebody else because of who's in you. Hi, I'm Denise Graves, and I'm president and CEO of Extravagant Love Project, which is a nonprofit that is about uh, touching women from every socioeconomic background and letting them know how much God extravagantly loves them and empowering them to be to know all that they are and whose they are. I'm Lisa. I'm Denise. Nice and nice to meet you, you. another Denise. Yes, I know. When I came in, it made me feel really good and welcomed. Like I was like just part of this. Do you know what I mean? They're like, well, well, let's get your hair done. The clothes and then the jewelry and then the nail. Oh my God, I am so overwhelmed. I'm so beautiful. And they all make you feel like you're welcomed here. You know what I mean? That, that good, godly, Christian kind of type thing. I felt in my heart that they have it in their hearts and they were bringing it out by doing what they're doing. Because they didn't have to do these kind of things, but they're doing it, you know? You know how they say everybody's like two paychecks away from being homeless. I think that there are all kind of dire situations and women are some of the most vulnerable. Everybody's in the shelter but saying, we just can't wait. We wanted this done. We want this makeover. We, you know what I mean? A change for just even for one day. So beautiful. You're in a shelter, you don't wear makeup, you don't get to do your hair. You don't have really have time. Because you're there, you're supposed to be looking for a job. You're supposed to be looking for housing. You're supposed to get yourself together. And, you, and it's always a hurry, hurry thing. You need to go get online. You have to go do this, you have to go do that. But you know what I mean? So you really don't have time for you. And like today, we had time for us. You know what I mean? I had time for me. We're going to love you extravagantly no matter what reason you're here. We don't care what your story is. If you want to share it, fine. But here's what God did to us and for us. And we won't waste our pain and we want to pour out of that to bring healing and love to you. But I'm praying every day I think that God is going to lead and guide me to, to wherever I need to go. That's why I look at it, you know, wherever job I'm meant to have, it will be there. Whatever home I'm meant to be in, it will be there. God will just open that door, and that's what I believe in my heart. This isn't us and them. This is we. This is the power of we, that we're still standing. We've been through fire and rain. You look at people face value and think, oh, they have it all together. You have no idea what people walk through. Everybody has a story. Everybody. Wow, that's such a wonderful and beautiful ministry. Well, that's all for God in the Headlines. Have a great day on Purpose. Hey, Cornerstone family, great news. Now you can access all your favorite Cornerstone moments right from your iPhone or iPad. Once you download the brand new Cornerstone television app, you can watch our live programming on demand, including special original shows and movies. You can also use the app to call for prayer. At CTVN, you are our family. And now, thanks to the Cornerstone television app, we're just a click away.
Cornerstone Cares is God's love in action. We focus on meeting tangible needs like food, education, health care, and housing for people all over the world, as well as sharing the good news of Jesus. From disaster relief efforts here in the United States to community support in Zimbabwe and Mongolia, from street ministry here in Pittsburgh to the education of Peruvian and South African children, your support of Cornerstone Cares goes a long way. At Real Life Coaching, our goal is to help you become the very best you possible. Did you hear me? The very best you possible. And then to win in life God's way. Danette Crawford's new book, The Standard Setters, explains why we need divine focus. Focus and energy. Get ready for coaching. Danette, we're talking about God's plan for our lives and, and how we can walk in victory and power. Mm -hmm. And you want to start out with the idea of focus. Yes. Explain that to us. Yes, you know, God has called us all to different purposes and different calls. And I've learned that one of the keys to success is being fine-tuned in our focus. And when we are focused, we can overcome any and all distractions in life. And you know, there will be so many distractions that come our way to try to prevent us from fulfilling our call, from fulfilling God's purpose in our life. But we've got to be fine-tuned in our focus. And in my book, The Standard Setters, I talk about Esther, how Esther was a woman of great focus. Think about it. She was a young girl that got called on by the king to come to the palace. I can imagine that she was, you know, planning her life ahead of her. And she got the call, but she answered when the king called. And that is very critical. That's a very important point for us to listen and obey when the king calls. So Esther was a woman of focus. She went to the palace. She answered the king and she was so fine tuned in her focus. It took focus to get there. And then it really took focus to stay there. And as we are fine tuned in our focus, we can see God's fulfillment in our life. You know, we can be really focused people, but we can be focused on the wrong thing and we can be focused in the wrong direction. When you say focus, help me understand what that means. What do you mean? Well, you know, I always use the example of a focal point when a woman births a baby. Mm -hmm. And I always say that you've got to get your focus, that point of where you're going, you know, and you have to be focused on it. I call it the finish line. Mm. Focus on the finish line. You'll never birth anything in the natural or in the spirit without a focal point. And just like giving birth of a baby, they'll say, get a focal point and then just push, right? <laughs> we need to be fine tuned in our focus and that is the finish line. Sometimes God will give us a dream or a vision and it takes years for that vision to come to pass. But as we remember what God has said, we got to write it down, that word, that purpose, and we write it down and then we can be fine tuned and we'll see that thing birthed in our life. That reminds me, many times we have these words from God, rhemas from God, yes. and they come in one ear and go out the other. Yes. But you just said, write them down. Write it down. When you write them down, they become part of your life. Yes, and you know, Habakkuk talks about write down the vision, mm -hmm. make it known. And I've learned that when God speaks to me, I need to write it down immediately. When God speaks to me in a dream or a vision, I need to write it down because the enemy comes immediately to steal that word. There'll be many distractions in life. And the number one distraction I believe that the enemy tries to use is discouragement. Along the way, there'll be many opportunities for you to be discouraged on fulfilling what God has called you to do. But as you're fine tuning your focus, if you refuse to be distracted, I call it distraction proof. <laughs> you know, we can be so distracted by what other people are saying and what other people are doing. We can be distracted by one word that somebody says to us and then it throws us all off course. 
Well, whatever it is today that God has told you to do, whatever you've set out, maybe God's called you to do a business or maybe God has called you to, to uh, homeschool your children and you're starting and you're like, I'm getting a little discouraged here. Whatever it is, I want to encourage you to be fine-tuning your focus and go all the way to see the fulfillment of that which God has said. And I always say that it's very important for us not just to have a desire, but to have passion for it. Mm. Well, fine-tuning. Okay, so let's take some practical steps on that. So, so I get a general idea. Often God speaks to, to me, big picture, but then I have to work through that to yes. get to the details. Is that what you mean when you say fine-tuned? Yes, and you know what? Be so fine-tuned that that you don't miss it. I call it hitting the bullseye. Mm -hmm. And you want to hit the bullseye of what God is saying to do. That's when it's fruitful. You know, Esther had favor because she was at the right place at the right time, doing the right thing with the right heart motive. So she hit the bullseye and she was very fruitful. But see, she was so focused that by the time she got to the palace, she remained focused. She had to be so focused that she was willing to lay down her life for the sake of her people. And I always say that Esther didn't get caught up in the hoopla of everything going on around her. Oh, now I've arrived. You know, I'm the queen here and I'm in the palace. She knew that God had sent her there for the sake of his people. And I want to encourage you today, don't just have a desire, but to have a passion to go all the way. See, desire will get you started. Maybe you have a desire to go to college or to get a degree. So you start out having a desire. Well, a little bit down the road, you're going to say, you know what? I'm going to need more than desire to get myself there. You're going to need passion. And passion will take you all the way across the finish line. But it's got to be your passion. And when you have your passion, you'll go all the way. What about the person who doesn't feel that passion or they don't, can't identify what their desire is? You know what? I believe that a lot of Christians, honestly, have lost their passion. I just saw a statistic that Christian, evangelical Christians, go to mm -hmm. church once a month. Mm -hmm. We're passionate about things. We're just passionate about the wrong things. Mm -hmm. And for me, when I pray and I maintain a prayer life every day, my prayer life's got to be fired up. Mm -hmm. I've got to pray in the Spirit on all occasions. Mm -hmm. I've got to be in the Word. I've got to have worship. And you know, I don't sing at all, but I love to worship. I'm a worshiper. Turn on that worship music. Get in the presence of God. Then you can be focused. And you know what? I always say that God will give you the 15th floor view of things <laughs> when you stay in prayer. Mm -hmm. He'll fine tune that focus and he'll see you. He'll let you see his vision of things. And, that, and then once you've gotten that vision, you know what direction you're going. Yes. Don't go until you get it, though. Right? You, you want to stay still until God says go. Exactly. Exactly. I always say that it's just like with our children. We start telling our children what to do, and they go off before I finish the instructions. Yep. And I would say to my daughter, I would say, you know, Destiny, here you go. I, and I start giving the, the instructions. I want to encourage you today to have that time before the Lord, to get in his presence every day and hear his direction. You know, I always say that it's like connect the dots. Sometimes we don't have to understand what God is doing. You know the little game, connect the dots, that the children play? You don't know the picture until the very end. And that's how it is with God. God will send us over here and he'll send us there and he'll have us do this. We're like, God, what are you doing? All we have to do is walk in obedience and let God connect the dots and it makes the beautiful picture. How important is that your prayer time for that focus, for you to find focus? When I get, and I'm going to just talk for me personally, when I get in my prayer closet, that, that is the direction. I always say that I am in the, the headquarters booth. I am getting the orders from headquarters. That's how I run my staff. That's how I run my ministry. God will tell me things and he'll take you to a place that you could never take yourself. And I come out with these wonderful ideas and I have to say, you know, I'm really not that smart. That was the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. giving me the wisdom, giving me the understanding, mm -hmm. showing me and telling me how to do something. And if you had not gone into the prayer closet, you don't know what would have happened. Exactly. Maybe then you'd start solving your own problems. Exactly. <laughs> you know, I, I love the story of Paul in the Bible. The word says that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him mm -hmm. out of them all. 
of everything that Paul went through, he stayed focused. Mm -hmm. And I know that he had a powerful prayer life. You know what? Focus will enable you to come through every distraction, any pit that you're thrown in, just like Joseph, anything that you go through, any snake bite, it'll enable you to shake it off because you're focused. You know, you're going to have to be rejection proof. Have you ever got your feelings hurt three times a day, right? You have got to be focused, fully focused forward and not allow anything to distract you from where God has taken you. I was just thinking about that as you're, as you're talking about focus. What are some of the things that cause us to lose focus? I believe that we can be going along our day in one word. Somebody can say mm -hmm. one word to us. Mm -hmm. We can get a phone call. We mm -hmm. can get a letter in the mail. We can get a phone call from that doctor. One word can set us off course. It's just like driving a car and going over a big bump and meeting a front end alignment. You know, no matter what's happening around you, as you stay focused and you keep your passion, mm -hmm. passion for the things of God, you've got to, you know what, when it's your passion, you don't negotiate the price. Mm -hmm. When it's just a desire, sometimes you will negotiate the price. Mm -hmm. But when it's your passion, you forsake all. It mm -hmm. doesn't matter what it's going to cost you. You go mm -hmm. all the way. Mm. What is distracting you today? What are you allowing to get you out of line with that which God has told you to do? God wants us not to be a whiner, but to be a winner and go all the way. <laughs> well, how do you make yourself distraction? What would be the way to say it? Distraction proof. Can you ever get to that place where you have up these, uh, uh, these barriers that keeps you from, you know, being distracted? Blinders. Blinders, that's what when I was When I was a little girl, I had a pony named Patches. And Patches would, we would ride in the cart behind the horse. Mm -hmm. And Patches had these blinders because if cars were going by, Patches could get distracted and we could flip that cart. Mm -hmm. And I believe that how we stay focused is writing the word down. We need to keep before us the vision. And you know what? Sometimes what happens is it doesn't happen fast enough for us. Yeah. Maybe today you had the word, you were headed there, you were focused, but because of time, you said, you know what? Maybe I just missed it. Maybe mm -hmm. that really wasn't God. God's timing is so vital. When God's will and God's timing intersect, suddenly mm -hmm. the promises of God will be fulfilled. Don't be distracted. Keep those blinders on no matter what or how long the time comes. I, you know, Daniel, I think you're speaking to a lot of people because the scripture says hope deferred makes ah. the heart grow sick. Yes. But a promise fulfilled is the tree of life. Mm. So many of us are in that place. We're waiting for that hope to be fulfilled. Yes. And our hearts are sick. Mm. And you're teaching us to keep the focus on the promise. And you know... I love that scripture. Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. When my husband left, the Lord said to me, hope was deferred and my heart was sick, but I had a longing that was fulfilled and I always had a desire to have a little baby girl with long blonde hair and big blue eyes. He said, focus on the fulfillment of that. And he taught me to stay focused on all of my blessings. Today, maybe those things are not coming to pass as quick as you had hoped. Mm -hmm. Focus on all of the longings that have been fulfilled that are a tree of life mm -hmm. in your life and count your blessings. Stop looking at all, the, all the, the progress that you need to make and keep focusing on all that God has already done. So that's a good word. That's a good word. So we keep our eyes forward by watching what God has done. Remember his, his word. That's why I'm excited to be able to offer you Danette's new book, The Standard Setters, as part of our ministry to you, our sharing in life together, is to bring you products and uh, information that changes life-changing. And this book is life-changing in that you hear a little bit of what Danette's saying, but the book goes into great detail. And then she's created this DVD with us that tells us the story from a different perspective. So it's kind of, you get to learn from reading, you get to learn from watching. I want to encourage you with your gift to this ministry of $25 or more, we want to get this. We'll rush it right to you so you can put it in, in application in your life and rise up and set that focus. So, and you say, well, I don't know what to focus on. Well, God will show you 
what to focus on. He'll give you that, that uh, goal. And it doesn't have to be a life-changing, world-shaking goal. Start small. The Bible says, despise not the day of small beginnings. Start small, do the next thing and the next thing. And then as you do that, you'll be amazed what God will do in your life today. That's how he works. He works step by step, step by step, precept by precept. Yes. And then we discover the supernatural. Mm -hmm. Walk Amen. right up on it. Amen. One step of obedience at a time. I like that. Would be a, what did you say? Not a whiner? What? Don't be a whiner, be a winner. <laughs> Don't be a whiner, be a winner. So here, call us now or go to the website for your gift of $25 or more and we'll send it to you. We'll pay for the shipping. Get it right off to you, the book and the DVD so that you may be able to learn. Listen, I'm emphasize that, learn. Mm -hmm. I say this all the time, but I want to em emphasize it here. My people perish for lack of knowledge. Are you perishing? then you need to learn and grow. And as we learn and grow, we become amazed at what God does in us and yes. through us. And then we watch him and you say, God, now that's what that meant. And you see how the pieces of, of, of the randomness of the past come together in a sovereign way. Only God can paint this picture of your life. And no other life is like yours. Your life is very unique. And when God moves in people's lives, when things start happening in the spirit, supernatural things happen like this story. God is good, God is great. I thank him each and every day for it's a true blessing that I'm even alive today. Back in 1984, I was in a serious car crash and suffered a broken neck. To be able to walk, let alone breathe again, is such a miracle. I'm not going to lie though, life hasn't been very easy for me since then. I've been struggling to pay my bills and can barely afford to buy food. I've also been experiencing all sorts of medical complications. I know that prayer for strength was the only thing that could see me through. Over the past few years, I've called the Cornerstone Prayer Line and I've had several different prayer partners pray with me. Then just a short time ago, God answered my greatest need. I was awarded $40,000 for a medical condition I had. My debt has now been wiped clean and I even planted my first Jubilee seed. It's only by God's grace, love, and mercy that he has truly provided for me. Pastor, I, I believe in 2018 that God has got a calling on the Christians, the church, to stand up and to become standard setters, just as the next book is titled, Standard Setters. You know, too often we've been a, a go along with the culture kind of people. You know, we don't want to make any waves. We want everybody to ha be happy. Mm -hmm. We want to We'll bend, we may not break, but we'll bend what we believe and we become more, more and more compromising as we do that bending. But this is the time for us to start to stand up. And we haven't talked about this, but 2018, God put in my heart, is the year that God is going to accelerate people into their purpose to be those standard setters that God has called them to be. And I believe this book is so profound because some of you right now, you need to begin to pray about the pinpoint accuracy of your purpose, right. of why God has brought you to the kingdom for such a time as this. So even right now, call in to our prayer partners, 888-665-4483, not only to get this book, but also say, pray with me about my purpose that I can set the standard and be focused on my destiny. I believe this is the time, Don, like you said, for the church to rise up and to be forward in their motion and take control of the way God's called them to. And I just want to clarify too that when you said the church, that's just not for the elders and the deacons. That's right. And on the committee chairpersons, that's for everybody. Amen. So anybody who is watching this program, I'm reminding you we all are, God has a purpose and a plan for you. That's right. It's that's not right. reserved yeah. to special people, it's reserved to you who are special. We are special in him. So it's not to a select, it's to everyone. Well, she used Esther as mm -hmm. part of her teaching, the story of Esther, and how Esther had to have great focus. Here she is an outsider in the court of the king. In those days, you didn't take liberties. 
You just didn't walk in and say, hey, honey, no. I'm here. Yeah. You know, that's, death, that's a death sentence. That's right. But she took liberties because she had the focus of God to go forward on his mission. Amen. And see, without that focus, and now we all have different circumstances. We're not all Esther's. Right. You know, we all have different circumstances. But to have that focus to, of what God wants us to, to do is critical, critical. And it, it is, as I was asking Nanette, what, what happens if you don't have a dream? What happens if you don't have a passion? Because we, we always hear all these motivational speakers talk about passion. Right. Follow your passion. Well, what if you can't identify what your passion is? And that's why she answered it very well. She said, if, you, if you'll follow after God, he'll put his passion in you. That's right. It's the God passion, Pastor. Amen. I don't want my own passion. That that's might right. come from whatever source. I want God's passion. Amen. You know, you've used a statement before called a life mission statement. Right. And everybody has one. And it's time for you to pray and begin to ask God, Lord, give me that. Because Don, also, that's where our power is. Our power is where our focus is. When we focus on God's will and plan for our life, he will not only finance it, he'll bless it. And you'll have, I love what she said, there'll be fruit right. where mm -hmm. there's product, or there'll be productivity where you're following the focus of God. Absolutely. I want to encourage you to get a copy of the book, Danette's book, Standard Setters, and the DVD that we created especially for this teaching with Danette that you can't get anywhere else. Get this for your own mm -hmm. study, for your own preparation of your mind. Because when, when you get, when you have the passion then what does the devil do? Let's just get right, let's be, let's be real. Because what the devil does next, once you start moving in a direction that's God, that is God's direction, then he starts coming at you. And the number one way he's gonna come at you, mark it down, write it down, put it in your journal, is discouragement. He's mm. gonna come and say, oh, come on, this is not you, this isn't the way it's gonna be, this isn't what you're like. Oh, that's what they're talking about on TV, but they don't know your real world. He is a discouraging, he's two good things. He's the prince and the father of lies, and he's the creator of discouragement. Okay. He wants you to get off the track. That's okay. what he was going to do. And, you know, Terry, when, when you feel that discouragement, and you know, well, Lord, I, I, Lord, I heard you. I want to move in your direction, right. but you get, your heart gets discouraged. Oh, yes. It really does get discouraged. You're, you know, it, it, then it makes you not want to go forward because you're like, well, I blew it. You know, I'm not able to do it. Why did I even write? You know, you question even writing your thoughts down or your passions or it's silly or whatever, and you forget about the fact that it was a calling of God that he placed on you, you know. We forget about where it all began, you know, and that sometimes we need to seal in our hearts that we're gonna have times we're gonna get thrown down, but we can always get back up. There's a, this is a good time to talk about you fail, but you succeed. What was that one, what did Albert Einstein say? Oh, well. You fail and then you the succeed. The definition with... of insanity? Is no. That true? <laughs> <laughs> Those who think keep doing the same thing the same way and think they're going to get a different res response is the definition. No, of it's just about the importance. Failure is helps us appreciate success so much more. We can't appreciate success without failure. Well, when we're, we're discouraged, let me just mm -hmm. be encouraging to you. Yes. There's 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 a there's a word for you to be encouraged by is be first be encouraged that you are discouraged. <laughs> first, yes. now I know it sounds silly, but. The fact that you're discouraged means that you have an enemy who wants you to take the wrong path. That means that God has you going towards the right path. So be encouraged. That's what James says. Mm -hmm. When you fall into these kinds of tests and temptations and diverse testings, count it all joy is what he said. Be encouraged that you have this battle going on. You say, boy, you're thankful for a battle? Yeah, that means you're on a path That's to right. victory. That's right. That's right. If you aren't off that path of victory, he'd leave you alone. That's right. That's <laughs> Pastor, he'd just oh, let that, that guy, is, he's on his own. But when yeah. you get towards God, the devil comes in to discourage. He does, and that's the reason why she said, write everything down. Yeah. Because a lot of times we get discouraged because our perspective shifts. We start looking at the attacks. We start looking at the financial problems. We start looking at the, keep your eye focused on the promise because the God that spoke it will bring it to <coughs> fruition in our lives. And that's what Daniel's teaching is all about, how to get you past discouragement, how to redefine your focus and your passion how to be a, tra a standard setter, Amen. Mm -hmm. a standard setter. That's just another way of saying being light and salt. That's just really what, what that says. How do you rise up to be light and salt? And then once, that, once you get through the season of discouragement, then desire kicks in. 
because you have to have desire, and that's what she teaches, desire. Desire is to get you to push past. You know, you want that more than you want what you got, and you're really willing to go forward to get it. What do you want most? Everybody desires something. Amen. Everybody's motivated by something. Everybody's desiring, and we, if it's in a natural world, it's a, it's, a, it's a car, it's a house, it's more money, it's a different relationship, it's lose weight, gain weight, get, lose hair, gain hair, whatever, whatever it is. <laughs> Everybody's got those kinds of desires. But when you can put those desires in line with God, who has a desire for us, then, brother and sister, we can get on the fast track. Amen. And I don't believe the Lord wants us in the snail in the snail mail. He wants us in the laser zone. That's right. Getting moving forward in this new year, 2018, stirring up and getting pushed off. And I believe also too, when you have God's focus, it's not us keeping it alive. You know, the Bible says faith is the substance of our hope. So when you have a God focus in your life, you don't have to keep it alive. It'll keep pushing you. It'll tell you, get up out of that bed, fight another day. You can't quit and throw in the towel because the promise isn't about us anyway, Sister Terry. It's about God doing it in us and through us because it's Him that works in us both to do and to will according to His good pleasure. Amen. Good pleasure. Amen. Good. So, so let me ask you this question. What is distracting you? What is it? Identify what's distracting you. God will show it to you right now. Lord, Lord, show us what is distracting us. We ask it in Jesus' name from your perfect plan and your perfect will. Lord, show us. Yes. And we'll deal with that by faith in the name of Jesus. So what is it? What's the Spirit of God showing you? What's distracting you? Now, go, go get yourself a piece of paper and pencil. You ought to have one of these with all the coaching sessions. Always have a piece of paper and a, That's right. a pen or some way to write down. Expect to hear from God. Now, write, write down what it is that God has spoken to you. Write down what the vision is that he's given to you. Well, so Don, I don't have a fully able to write it down. Well, write down what you can write down, Pastor. Mm -hmm. Start. A little start's better than no start. That's right. Just get a little bit of something down on what. Here's what you desire. Start taking a personal inventory on where you are and who you are and what does God have for you. Do not accept the lie of the devil that you are all you are and that's as much as you're going to ever be. Pastor, there is no, no limitations on what God can do with a person who's willing to trust him. That's right. And you know, when you talk about writing things down, I heard a man say one time, ink it, don't just think it. Because when you write it down, the devil can steal your thoughts, but he can't steal your pen and paper unless you choose to lose it. So you're right. There's nothing that we can't accomplish in God. Ink it, don't what? Don't think don't it. Don't just think it. Well, let's go to prayer. We, 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 we start the programs with prayer. We end the programs with prayer. We're so thankful that you've joined us. These folks represent many, many, many people who have called in and many called in over the course of the year. We're in a new year. Yes. And a new year. Let's watch for God's Hallelujah. mighty results in Jesus' name. Father, we come to you. Yes, we do. Father, in the powerful name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And Father, it's in his name that, Lord, we can claim victory for our friends. Lord, we transfer into these people's lives faith. Call out faith in Jesus' name. Yes. Hope yes. in Jesus' yes. name. Lord, joy in Jesus' name. Yes. Passion and focus in Jesus' yes. name, God. Give your people a vision that is your vision for them, yes, Lord God. God. Lord, we Stone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.